Before we get into this episode, I just wanted to mention our sponsor, Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast, and let me explain, because it's free. And there are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. It's so easy, even a chud can do it. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. You are listening to the Rude Horror Podcast with your host, Marcus Rude. What's up, guys? Before we kick off to the main topic of today's episode, I wanted to go over a possible new segment that I'm going to do on this podcast. It's going to be Week in Horror History. So, last Monday was October 21st, 31 years ago, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, released in theaters. 16 years ago, in 2003, Castlevania, Lament of Innocence, released on the PS2 in North America. 14 years ago, in 2005, Doom released in theaters. October, and then Tuesday, October 22nd, 37 years ago, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, released in theaters. So if you hear my daughter, and she's just playing, um... Anyways, 31 years ago, in 1988, Monsters premiered on television. It's funny, uh, me and my wife just watched an episode of that the other night on uh, Amazon Prime. It's kind of a cool old show. Um, 15 years ago, in 2004, The Grudge released in theaters. And then yesterday, October 23rd, 77 years ago, In 1942, The Mummy's Tomb starred Lon Chaney Jr. released in theaters. Damn, that that is a long time ago. Like, just just saying 77 years ago that movie released in theaters, that's just, that's crazy. Sam Raimi turned 60 yesterday. Turns, turned 60 yesterday. Um, 32 years ago, Prince of Darkness was released in theaters. 18 years ago, 13 Ghosts released. (sighs) Just reading off some of this just makes me feel old, but hey, it is what it is. Then today, October 24th, 57 years ago, Eyes Without a Face was released in theaters. In the the U.S. Um, And then tomorrow, October 25th, 41 years ago, John Carpenter's Halloween was released in theaters. 26 years ago, Vincent Price passed away. He would have been 108 today. Or, I mean, tomorrow, he would be 108. Um, October, Saturday, October 26th, 40 years ago, the original When a Stranger Calls is released in theaters. 18 years ago, Snoop Dogg's movie Bones is released. And then finally, Sunday, October 27th, 30 years ago, Wes Craven's Shockers is released in theaters. 24 years ago, Vampire in Brooklyn is released in theaters, another Wes Craven film. And then finally, 21 years ago, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 is released in theaters. So that's all we have for this week in horror history. And on to a couple of events that are happening around the the Quad Cities, Illinois and Iowa border. Um, 36, not 36, uh, 365 horror films and Midwest Monster Fest present 12 Hours of Terror 7 at Roz Talks in Rock Island, Illinois on Sunday, October 27th, this Sunday, if you're listening on the day of release. They'll be playing Cemetery Man, Spider Baby, Dog Soldiers, Maniac Cop, 
trilogy of terror, a tales from the dark, or uh, gosh darn, a tale, tales from the crypt episode, Demonica in a surprise film, and uh, the the time slots for these showings will be from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. and the admission is free. Just show up there and uh, you get in for free. Um, they'll have uh, a bar there or you can buy drinks and uh, they have like hot teas and uh, some fresh baked cookies that I would definitely recommend. They're very good. So yeah, that that's going to be a heck of a good time. So definitely check that out. And then also All Senses, Wake Brewing, Ragged Records, Midwest Monster Fest present Fabio Frizzi live. Performing the live score to The Beyond, followed by a set of Frizzy to Fulci at the Ribco Brewing Company in Rock Island, Illinois, on Sunday, November 17th. It will be an 18 older show, so keep that in mind. And uh, the start time will be 8 o'clock at night for that show. You can get your tickets at MidwestTicks.com. That's Midwest Ticks. All with one T in there. So W E S T I X dot com. And uh it's gonna be a gates the gates of hell if if you will. Um also check out Midwest Monster Fest dot com for more info on the Quad City's new horror and pop culture convention. And uh they will have a big announcement to make next week, so keep in tune for that one. So with that news said, we're about to uh, kick off to the main topic, which is the last horror film. Enjoy. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Root Horror here, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Root Horror Podcast. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about The Last Horror Film, which is a film from 1982, and it is uh, credited as a horror comedy film, um, which it is, and uh, the alternate title of the last horror film is called Fanatic and that had me thinking did Fred Durst remake this film um there's a lot of similarities there um but in this one it's about a cab driver follows his favorite actress to a film festival to convince her to star in his movie um the cab driver is played by Joe Spinell and his favorite actress is played by Caroline Monroe. Um, so that has me thinking maybe Fred Durst kind of, I mean, he had to have gotten the idea from this film as there's just so many simul- uh, similarities there. Um, but yeah, this film, um, I thought it was all right. Um, it's this film felt a lot like Maniac and if you've seen Maniac and you've seen the last horror film you'll probably agree with me I mean there's this there's so many similarities there so if you've never seen Maniac I would suggest watching that first before watching this film because um I, I feel like Maniac was the better made movie. And I think this was just kind of right after Maniac. But also, I wanted to point out <clears throat> on Letterboxd, if you type in the last horror film, the alternative titles for this film are M- Maniac 2, Love to Kill, or Maniac 2, or Fanatic. So I don't know where Maniac 2 came from. I mean, it's similar, but it's 
different at the same time, but different characters. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Um, if I could dig up some more info on that and shed some light to you guys, I uh, will have to do that in another episode. Or if you guys know the story behind that. Um, speaking of Maniac 2, if you get the trauma release of this film, I think there's it's packed with some f- special features that includes Maniac 2, the short film, which Joe Spinell was making but then he suddenly passed away so that never got to fruition um that's why it's a short because of him passing but he initially planned on making uh a maniac 2 full length so that's just a cool little tidbit i thought um but let's get into the last horror film This film was made in 1982, directed by David Winters, and uh, David Winters also directed Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare, that was hosted by Vincent Price. He also directed Space Mutiny, Mission Kill, and a few other action titles, Um, and also David Winters starred in this film as well. Carol Monroe Monroe plays as Jana Bates and she's been over 50, in over 50 films. Um, her more notable ones are Maniac, Slaughter High, Dracula AD 72, <clears throat> 1972, Don't Open Until Christmas, and she is one of the Bond girls from the 007 franchise. And she's been in, uh, I think, a few hor- Hammer horror films. Unless she's only been in Dracula AD 1972. I think she's been in another one. I'm not entirely sure. And then also starring Joe Spinell, as we were saying earlier. Or I was saying earlier. Sorry. <laughs> um... He also starred in Maniac, so that's where Carol Monroe and Joe Spinell kind of coincide. And, uh, you know, that's why I think it's ironic how this is, maybe that even plays a part in why this is so similar to Maniac, because they both have starred in that film. And, uh, but anyways, Joe Spinell is in the Godfather series, Taxi Driver, Cruising, and Rocky. And uh, I know I'm going to butcher this name, but Philomena Spagnuolo, um, which she's credited as Mary Spinell in the movie. She plays as Vinny's mother. And uh, apparently he was a mom of his boy in real life. And so he had her in a few of his movies when he could get her in. So it's kind of funny that he got his mom to play in this movie as his mom. <laughs> um also starring Devin Goldenberg, and he's also starred in uh, Savage Weekend, which is probably the only notable movie that I'll say. And then Judd Hamilton played as Alan Cunningham, and he was Carol Monroe's husband in real life during the time of filming this. So I just thought that was a little interesting. But anyways, um, we're gonna get into uh, what what this what this movie is, how it's played out. So there is gonna be spoilers. So this is a spoiler alert. If you've never seen this movie, you probably don't want to listen to what I'm about to say. Um, this episode is gonna be kind of shorter than the last. Maybe we'll see. But uh, I'm just gonna kind of do a run through of what this movie's about. So, Vinny Durand is the guy who uh, Joe Spinell is. He is a New York City taxi driver, and he's obsessed with the international cult actress Jana Bates, played at, uh, Carol Monroe plays as Jana Bates. Um, and she's known to be the queen of horror films. 
So Vinny returns to his apartment where he lives with his mother. And he tells her that he's leaving and he's going to attend the Cannes Film Festival in France. Hoping to meet Jana Bates and get her to star in his movie to kickstart his film career as a director. But his mother calls it just another one of his crazy ideas. And also I wanted to say this was filmed during the Cannes Film Festival during that time. So that was kind of another cool little thing. Anyways, Vinny arrives in Cannes. He tries to meet Jana several times, but he's turned away. Jana is in Cannes to promote her latest horror film, Scream, in which uh, uh, she's been nominated for Best Actress. Um, accompanying Jana and her manager and ex-husband, Brett Bates, and agent scripts are accepted. Never mind, I read my notes wrong. Uh, and the film's producer, Alan Cunningham, her current um, fling, or whatever you want to say. Um, but Vinny phones Brett, insisting on talking to Jana about his script, but is told only agent scripts are accepted. So he's trying to get in. Be like, hey, man, I got this. I need to talk to her. I got this script written. You know, he just sounds like a crazy guy, which he is a crazy guy in this movie. You'll have to watch it. Um, of course, everyone's blowing him off. Like, no, no, you know, you're a nobody. You, you can't get in, all that kind of stuff. So then shortly afterwards, Jana is at a press conference with Alan when she receives flowers and a note saying, you've made your last horror film goodbye. Um, she goes to see Brett at his hotel, entering the bathroom. She finds his bloody, stabbed body in a bath. Brett's severed head rolls off into the sink, and Jana runs away screaming. When she later returns with the police, the body is gone. Vinny has f fantasies about of scenes of himself being an acclaimed director, and uh, it, you know he's. It's, he, he, you know, <laughs> he thinks he's like the greatest director of all time, and you know, because he's made this movie with Jana Bates, and it's funny. Um, and this is where some of the comedy is. Um, but, uh, anyways, um, he encounters some naked young women bathing at a beach at night and picks up one of their stockings but is confronted by one of the women who taunts him before running back into the water. The woman calls him a weirdo and Vinny runs off. Uh, it's not, not quite the ladies man that he thinks he is. So uh, Vinny continues to follow Jana around and filming her with his camera. Marty Bernstein runs into Vinny and shrugs him off when Vinny asks him if he's willing to promote his movie. Marty meets with the movie director Stanley Klein and his personal assistant Susan Archer when they reveal that all of them have received the same notes that Jana and Brett received. But when Marty takes his suspicions to the police, they think that Brett's disappearance is another publicity stunt. The next day, Marty gets a letter from Brett to meet him in a theater screening room. When Marty shows up, he is hacked with a hatchet by a hooded figure. While Jana attends more press conferences, Vinny goes to a nightclub where he's attacked or he attacks a stripper after seeing her as Jana. He goes so he's having visions. He thinks that the the stripper is Jana when it's really not. But he just he can't help him he can't help himself so he runs up and starts grabbing her and then uh, you know the screen cuts to where it's you know because there would be visions of um, it would be Jana and then it wouldn't be but he you know the whole time he thinks it's Jana but then it finally cuts to where when he's all over her that it's the the other stripper and 
there's people that are just grabbing them and like, you know, you gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so they kick him out. Um, and then he goes to a local cinema where he watches a gory horror film that Stanley Klein makes and runs into him outside the theater after he, uh, he just couldn't take it. He thought it was so gory, which I thought was ironic because he's going around killing people, but yet he can't handle a horror movie. But, I mean, maybe that's part of it just because, you know, it reminds him of his killings. I don't know. But then he runs out side of the theater and runs into the director who made the horror film he was just watching and uh, kind of tells him that how could you make this you know this is just disgusting blah blah and the guy just kind of seems puzzled uh, Vinny runs away then the following day Susan tells Stanley that she wants to leave the Cannes Film Festival because she just something just isn't right to her but he convinces her to stay. Then that night, both of them are killed by the hooded figure at the top of a building where Stanley Stanley is stabbed. And uh, th then she falls off a building's ledge after getting shot. The killer then takes his movie camera and films all the deaths. Um... Across town in Janet's hotel room, Vinny sneak, sneaks in with a bottle of champagne and surprises Jana as she's taking a shower. He asks her to appear in his movie, but she insists that he needs to leave right away. She's not having anything that what Vinny's got to say. And it, and it causes Vinny to break down in tears, and he's angry and upset. <clears throat> And then he smashes the bottle in the sink and threatens Jana with the bottle's jagged edge. When the doorbell rings, Jana shoves Vinny aside and sprints off. Jana um, is only in her bathrobe towel and she is running across town, just screaming. And, uh, <laughs> which is it's kind of mind boggling that, that this is happening, but she is running straight to uh, the film festival where there's you know paparazzi movie stars and everything and she's just running his towel just frantically screaming and then uh, um, the, the, the people in the lobby think it's like another publicity stunt so they're all clapping and stuff and she's trying to talk to Alan Cunningham about you know there's this guy in my uh apartment and um, she she need, she wants to leave town because this is just getting out of hand and he calms her down and um, the next day um, Alan drives Jana to a remote castle in the French countryside where a musician friend of his named Jonathan is staying just, you know, to get away, because, you know, he's listening to her, like, yeah, you know, I'll take you out of here, so that's where they go, but Vinny is following them the whole time, that evening, Vinny sneaks into the castle, but is chased away by Janice's bodyguards, who accidentally kill Jonathan, as he tries to stop Vinny, um, Alan and Janet return to Cannes for the award ceremony, where Vinny sneaks into the festivities, dressed as a local policeman, which I thought that was kind of brilliant that, uh, cause he knew he wasn't going to be able to get in by just, Hey man, I'm a director. Let me in, you know, as, as he usually would, he got smart and he, uh, got a hold of a police uniform. Um, while Jana waits in the back wing of the building, Vinny subdues Jana with chloroform and takes the unconscious actress away in his car back to the castle to film a scene there. Vinny films a scene with him playing Dracula and Janet as a victim. Suddenly, Brett Bates shows up with another camera and a pistol and congratulates Vinny on setting everything up for him, which that's the twist of the movie. Brett is revealed to be the killer in the mastermind behind the whole thing, not Vinny, which, yeah, it you know, 
it, it uh it plays up that Vinny is killing the whole time, but really it was uh the film director that uh Brett that uh was quote unquote killed first. Um Brett reveals that one day when Vinny phoned him about his movie proposal, he realized that he had the perfect fall guy to set up Vinny for all the killings and to get even with Jana for leaving him. Vinny throws his cape over Brett, distracting him, and runs. But Brett grabs Jana and taunts Vinny to come out in the open. Outside, Vinny turns on a motorcycle's headlight, blinding Brett. And as Jana steps aside, Vinny murders Brett with the chainsaw <laughs> via, like he cuts uh, his arms off and beheads him. It's it's a pretty cool scene. Um, as Alan arrives with the police, Vinny stands before Brett's dead body and screams. So, turns out Vinny was a good guy. But... That's, that's not the end. Then the image falls back to reveal that the whole story in this movie that Vinny filmed at the Cannes Film Festival with Jana Bates and he is now back in New York showing it to his mother in a screening room. His mother tells Vinny that she's finally proud of him for directing and starring his first movie. But Vinny explains that it was uh, that it will be his last horror film. As Vinny starts to talk to his mother about ideas for his next movie, she interrupts, <laughs> interrupts him and uh, asks him for a joint. Um, and then the two uh, share a, a smoke as the film ends. So that was a, a pretty cool ending, I thought. But, uh, I don't know. It, it's just, Watching this whole movie, all I can think about is Maniac. So, I mean, I don't know if watching this first would uh, be a better film, but I feel like Maniac was the better made movie, so I would definitely watch Maniac first. But there, there's a lot of, you know, I just think there's a lot of similarities there. Like, all I could picture was Maniac while watching this. But uh, I thought it was pretty good. I gave it um, three stars out of five on Letterboxd. It, it was a pretty good watch. I wasn't bored the whole time, so. Um, but an another little uh, little trivia about this movie. Um, they weren't prosecuted for making this movie because they made it at the Cannes Film Festival, but the film was seized and confiscated in under the UK or in the UK under Section 3 of the Obscene Publications Act 1959 during the Video Nasty Panic. So they did take this film away, but uh, later wasn't prosecuted for it. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, the, the film was first shown on October 9th, 1982 at the Stitches Film Festival in Barcelona, Spain. The film went on to win a slew of awards in various film festivals. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then, uh, like I said, the other title was fin Fanatic, and that was uh, released in the United States under that title in July of 1983. And then... Uh, it was first released on home video in the USA on May 23rd, 1984 on Media Home Entertainment. So, uh, yeah. That is the last horror film starring Joe Spinell. It's it's one of Joe Spinell's not greatest films, but as far as horror films go, it's, it's up there with Maniac. Maniac's on top, though. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Definitely a, uh, a movie to check out. So, uh, thanks for listening. Um, I'm not sure what the next episode is going to be. Um, I know I said I'm 
not just going to only talk about horror movies, but for right now, I'm going to talk about horror movies because that's the only thing I can kind of think of right now. But uh, I'm pondering the idea. I might do Stage Fright next because uh, that's the movie I have to watch for uh, that I picked for the cult movie challenge on Letterboxd. This week is Slasher Week, so if you want to play along, you can just message me and I can send you the link on the rules. But uh, this week is Slasher Week, so if you want to watch a slasher film, more power to you. Um, so I will, uh, I'm not sure exactly So what I'm going to do next week. I, I think I'm going to try to do that, but we'll see. Maybe I'll surprise you. But thanks for listening. If you want to get a hold of me, and uh, throw some ideas as far as topics to talk about. Um, I'm at the World of Root Horror on Instagram, or you can email me at rudehorror at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. I will see you in the next episode. You have been listening to the Root Horror Podcast. If you like this content and would like to hear future episodes, please follow or subscribe. If you dare.